<laughs> but anyway, I want to welcome each and every one of you uh, for tuning in. And then uh, we'll go ahead and get started here with our presenter. And Mr. Begay will be speaking on Zoom presenter best practices. So if we can all remain on mute and hand it off to our presenter. Raphael, thank you for um, setting up this time and this day to share some of the knowledge and skills of best practices with our, our team here, not only our managers, but also we also have some staff that are on the call. So thank you, Raphael, we'll give you the floor. Thank you, Dr. Fowler. I appreciate the introduction. Good morning, everyone. So good to see you. Um, if you're in a position to utilize your camera while on call, I definitely appreciate that in the later half of the presentation. Right now, I'll go ahead and move into uh, a presentation mode here. But again, thank you all for joining. But before we begin, I just wanted to take a quick moment and do a quick round of introductions, maybe like your name, your title, your department. And how this will work is I myself will start, I'll introduce myself, and I will call on someone else to hand it off to them. Again, name, title, department, a brief hello. And then once you're done, hand it off to the next person, preferably someone you may not see uh, with their camera on or someone you may not have met or haven't talked to in a, in a while. This would be a good way to get everybody jolted and ready for the morning. So again, good morning. My name is Ralphie Albigay, Public Information Officer for the Division of Human Resources. Thank you all for joining us today. Very excited to share some tips and knowledge. This is an informal meeting, so definitely appreciate your comments and participation. I'll go ahead and hand it off to Tamara. You were on mute. While she's getting set up, I'll hand it off to Mr. Dene Yazi. Again, name, title, and your department, just something very briefly. Okay, good morning, everyone. I'm Anthony Dene Yazi. I'm the Senior Programs and Project Specialist at the DHR Executive Administration Office. And good morning, looking forward to this presentation. And let's hand it off to Serenity. Serenity, I see that your audio is connected, but we cannot hear you. She has um, audio issues with her. Okay, you can take her place, Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, everybody. My name is Tracy Shorty. I am the HR analyst with the classification and pay section with the Department of Personal Management. Go ahead and pass it off. Uh, I'll pass it off to Cindy. Good morning. Thank you, Tracy. My name is Cindy Holian, um, Senior HR Tech with Employee Relations Section for with BPM. Good morning, everyone. Go ahead, hand it off. Let's see, I'll hand it off to Roberta. Yet I have been here, though here hair. Shake here on in short footage, any washes chain touching me, does Jade Sebastian need a shanala workforce development um, department manager, Asian on this door here hair, though yet even a gray high Charlotte Baholji Stone. Good morning. Um, this is Charlotte um, with Department of Personnel Management, Employee Relations. Good morning to everyone. It's good to see your faces here. I haven't seen you guys in a while. And thank you, Raphael, for putting this best practices session on. So it'd be great to, to get new ideas and chime in with doing the best practices. No problem, Charlotte. May you well, call okay. on Judy.
Good morning. This is Judy, um, Child Support Services Sales Program um, Manager. She has I see this not key on a bus stream. It's not Jenny Rashanala. Rona Kaida Shachi. Am I on? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to hand it off to Cresilia. Good morning. My name is Cresilia Nelson. I am with the uh, Tiba City Child Support Office. I am a child support case management specialist and also delegated regional manager. I will go ahead and hand it off to Tamara. Okay, can you hear me now? <laughs> Sorry, um, before I was muted, I didn't unmute. Anyways, um, my name is Tamara Slim and I am with the Department of Child Support Services for the Tuba City Agency. And that's pretty much all. So I'll hand it off to uh, Charlotte's victim. She went, uh, you can choose someone else. Okay, um, Henrietta Smith. Morning, Henry. Uh, what we're doing is a brief introduction with your name, title, and department. And once you're complete, you can hand it off to another individual here in the gallery area, another attendee. Good morning, Sheila. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Henry, are you still there? Yeah. Do what do mind? I do? <laughs> no problem. Do you mind providing your name, title, oh, and department? No, you're fine. And once okay. you're done, go ahead and hand it off to another attendee here in the Zoom call with us. Okay. Um, this is Henrietta Smith. Um, my uh, title is Contract Compliance Officer with the Department of Child Support and Services. Good morning to all. Ralph, can you hear me now? Yeah, go for it, Serenity. Okay. Thank you, I Henry. I just changed to my laptop, so I don't know what's wrong with my computer. But um, good morning, everybody. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Uh, my name is Serenity Nagal. You guys know me as Serenity Smith. I'm the senior HR analyst here with um, Department of Personal Management under the Classification and Pay Office. So um, it's good to be back, and everybody have a good work week. Thank you. Do you mind passing it off? Oh, I'm sorry, Ralph. I don't even know who hasn't gone yet. Um, <laughs> um, Danesta? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Good morning. Um, welcome back, Serenity. And um, I, I am the Senior Office Specialist here with Office of Background Investigations. And um, it's good to see everybody's faces and I'll hand it off to Jolene. Thank you, sister. All of you. Um, and welcome back, Serenity. Good to see you. Uh, and I'm the adjudicator with uh, OBI and um, OBI is Office of Background Investigations for those of you who don't know. Um, what else? I guess that's it. Thank you. Uh, Lorraine. Lorraine, you are muted. I'm sorry, I apologize. Uh, good morning. Thank you for that, Jolene. Um Sheya, Lorraine Tabahan Shado, uh Hanagahinsha, Taba Bashashin, the Bethlehem Dasha Che go Tutnis and Dashanala. And I work with the Division of Human Resources Administration Office. Thank you. Now pass it on to Andrea and all her group in the DRS conference room. Thank you. Good morning. Can, Good morning. Can you guys hear me? <laughs> okay, thank you, um, Lorraine and 
Dr. Fowler, uh, Raphael for putting the presentation together. I think it's much needed. And again, Cinco de Mayo, time for Cha Cha Cha. Um, we do have, um, oh, or I have here with us, um, Rick Hosky, who's our IT person. And then I also have Sunny Aaron Begay, who is our office um, assistant. And then Dinah Lewis, who is our retirement officer, who takes care of 401k. And also Nielsen McCabe, who is also the retirement officer that takes care of the defined benefits section. So I want us all to learn what um, our best practices are going to be. And um, also Evelyn Wilson is here um, with the, she's our office um, assistant for the front desk area. So um, let me just kind of swing this around. So So I'm not sure what happened with their connection. Are you, are you still there, Andrea? Okay, so well, just for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and select individuals down the line, just a brief introduction, and then we'll go ahead and get started. So we'll go ahead and start with Garrick, since you have the coolest background here. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Garrick Sosti. I'm with HR Position Control Analyst with the Position Control Section um, with the Department of Personnel Management. Thank you. Resita? Good morning, everyone. My name is Resita Tati. I'm currently the Delegated Human Resources Director with the Department of Personnel Management. Thank you. Thank you. Shar? Good morning, everyone. My name is Shar Kruger, and I'm the training manager with staff development in what was my <laughs> training department. Sorry about that. Auto Twitichini right here. And I see some other Twitichinis there. So welcome. Thank you. Awesome. Tish. Good morning, everyone. My name is Leticia Tom. I am the office specialist for the Division of Human Resources Administration. Good morning. Thank you. Bernita, um, name, title, and department? Hello. Good morning. Good morning. The, um, my name is Bernita Watson. I'm with the Tupac City Child Support Office, and I'm a Child Support Enforcement Officer, and I'm here in Tupac City. Hi, everybody. Awesome. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate it. Uh, we'll go to Maria. Good morning. Good. Oh, My good morning. Maria Calamity with the Chinle Child Support and um, the uh, Child Support Services Regional Manager. Thank you. Samantha? Uh, good morning. My name is Samantha Frank, and I'm the HR Record Supervisor with Department of Personnel Management. Thank you. Mr. Pete? Uh, yeah, hey. Good morning, on the phone. Uh, related to Nina, introduction, plans, height, weight, <laughs> uh, good morning. My name is Edsel Peak, Program Manager for Navigation TV and Film. Uh, I hope everybody's doing well. I don't know why you got your faces are all covered. I can't see you guys. Hey, good morning. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Lena? Thank you, Lena. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lena Ola Flood. Um, I'm a child support enforcement officer with the Navajo Nation Department of Child Support Services in Fort Defiance, Arizona. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. And Mr. Hudson. Still muted. Good morning. Morning, sir. Uh, 
Oh, Walter Hudson with Navajo OSHA. I'm a Sinajini. Kapahe. Nakaidne, my chase, and Kiaani, my nollies. So I just heard this the other day. They said, uh, all my relations. I know I don't know what that means, but they were saying hello, all my relations. So it was that way. I'm here with Mr. Rich, Mr. Richard Bates, who's a senior safety tech with OSHA, and Melanie James, who is an office specialist, and we're Navajo OSHA, Occupational Safety and Health Administration, best practice. Uh, wash your socks, I almost said. Wash your hands and be safe. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You should always wash your socks. <laughs> so is there anyone I missed? I believe I was able to, everyone able had a chance to speak. So just real quickly, this is an introduction exercise. Um, I was a part of a professional development virtual opportunity, and they did a quick round of introductions where they were passing the mic. And it was very interesting to see people's comfort, engagement, readiness, and presence. And the way you see that is how they're interacting, how quick they're looking at the mic, them being ready to respond when asked upon, seeing how engaged they are. And it, you can obviously see if there are other things going on, respectfully saying. So I just wanted to go ahead and uh, open that up before I move into a presentation mode. So go ahead, this is gonna be a brief presentation. You're more than welcome to turn off your video and engage directly with the presentation. Once it's complete, go ahead and turn that back on. So we'll go ahead and transition here. Thank you. Okay, so to begin, go here, perfect. So again, today's presentation is regarding Zoom presenter best practices. Again, my name is Ralphie Albigay, Public Information Officer with the Navajo Nation Division of Human Resources. She'e Ralphie Albigay Yinishe, Hanal Nishle, Kislichit Bushishin, Taban Dashiche, Machine Dashanelle. So again, in reference to brief introductions, I know that majority of us know each other here, but in reference to the other employees joining us today who are welcome, just wanted to offer that. So as a quick disclaimer regarding this session, as well as this presentation, this session is being recorded and will be available for viewing later on our YouTube page, which we recently launched. That our YouTube channel is Navajo Nation Division of Human Resources, which will primarily consist of trainings and past presentations such as this one. All comments and questions will be monitored. Participants are welcome to utilize the chat feature to engage with others or myself. In recognition as a disclaimer, I wanted to also recognize that today is Murdered, Missing, and Indigenous Women's and Girls National Awareness Day. The Navajo Nation Council is hosting several initiatives um, today as well. So I just want to give a quick shout out to that and remind each and every one of you to look out for one another and to remain safe and vigilant at this time. So in terms of content and the overall approach of this presentation, we'll go over quick brief Zoom controls virtual presence, participant engagement, and post-session logistics regarding presentations you're um, going to be conducting. So again, Zoom controls. So right off the bat, um, we've seen how individuals are comfortable, are able to engage with both muting and unmuting themselves when called upon, as well as turning on and off their video. So as far as best practices, when you're entering a meeting, or any online um, initiative, it is best practice to mute yourself upon entry. Granted, you're getting yourself set up, it's usually good to take a moment, make sure everything is set behind you so that way your equipment is ready to go. Uh, in reference to that, as the meeting begins or webinar, um, it is highly encouraged that you utilize your video, that way you have your presence known and you're well aware of it by seeing yourself in the screen and you can keep yourself engaged in that manner. Sometimes with your audio, this may be an issue in terms of your computer. Some um, systems have an internal speaker that will allow you to speak freely to the computer versus using earphones such as me. I'm able to do both. However, this allows for me to have a focus um, and, a, and a presence here with you guys all. In terms of video, being able to toggle it on and off is very convenient, especially when asked to do so, especially if it's with um, uh, someone requiring your engagement, active engagement at that, let alone within a virtual scene. 
your share screen option is very important as a presenter. Um, I've attended past uh, trainings and presentations within programs from our, uh, within our division, and I've noticed some things, and sharing your screen has been um, uh, a bit of a challenge, if not, uh, not everyone's comfortable with it yet, but I would imagine um, after today, uh, if not moving forward with some practice, you'll be able to feel a little bit more confident in that. But in reference to sharing your screen, one thing that I've noticed for those who are interested in sharing videos or graphics is that there is a, um, an additional option when you share your screen. So normally as you share your screen, we'll go ahead and try this exercise later. Uh, there is a um, optimized video to share your screen. So normally when you're trying to share your screen, majority of the time, the audio doesn't come through. Uh, there's a little checkbox there that you can indicate that you're going to be playing a video or optimizing it for a video. As far as chat, uh, um, as a presenter, you're well aware of the chat feature and those comments and questions that are coming to you directly or being presented to the entire group of participants. In past presentations, um, I've seen um, individuals message me directly in response to a question, I message them directly. So for example, I'll message, hey, how are you this morning? Did you get my email yesterday? Yes, I did. Great. One-to-one -one discrete message. Um, however, for example, this person may want to ask a question to the general um, presenters there, you know, come to me directly. Within the chat feature, you can message people directly or everyone all at once. Within the chat feature, you're also able to attach uh, documents, and send them over as well as URL links. So for example, me sharing any presentation with you or resources, I'd be more than able to um, provide that within the chat. However, as I'm sharing my screen within Zoom, it is very difficult to access the chat as it's normally located up on the top as you're sharing your screen. And it makes it a little bit limited in terms of engagement. However, it's usually best practice to have a co-pilot or a co-host on the side with you to either um, respond and facilitate the chat and Q&A feature within Zoom as you're presenting or actually moving your slides for you. In this case, I am a team of one today, just so that way you can understand how it can be done on your own. Um, in reference to reactions and raising your hand. So to begin, it depends on the type of meeting you're in. Obviously, if you're in a webinar, you can use the reactions and raise hand scenario to um, uh, visualize and make known your engagement. Otherwise, you can obviously just unmute yourself and uh, stop. Uh, normally, as we're in person presenting, you normally don't stop a speaker as they're presenting and normally wait to hold your questions until the end. However, some individuals, say, for example, may have a pressing question that they want in, to be discussed that may be beneficial to all attendees, so they may pose it within the chat. Um, again, this may be best practice to actually have someone on the side to monitor that for you. If it's resources or any general information that is available elsewhere that you can reference rather than actually speaking to it, feel free to respond and share that for them or for all participants as well. So your virtual presence. I think this is the thing that um, most people uh, could get comfortable with. So. We live in a very digital world where all majority of us are on social media or use some form of technology to have a online presence, whether that's your email account, whether that's at work, whether that's Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, what have you, we each have a virtual presence. Um, our virtual presence does not define our physical presence or who we are as people. So in reference to that, having your video on is great because you have your presence here and I myself opening up the uh, meeting had my video on while people were slowly um, turning on theirs. It set the mood and energy that you know this is to be engaged with and to have your video on, as I stated before, you set the mood. So if I came in here frantic and trying to figure things out, um, it would then influence the way you as a participant engage with me as a presenter. So you set the mood and energy. Today, the mood I'm presenting is hope, light, I have a little um, Navajo basket to help me out here. But uh, in terms of my energy, I want to remain calm. I want to remain, um, uh, um, have some sense of clarity in terms of what I'm presenting. So that way, 
those attending can receive it. Having the appropriate attire um, is best practice. So for example, if you, majority of us were teleworking throughout the year, um, I, I seen some individuals get on and it's just another day at home, which is totally fine given that we are in a pandemic. But in terms of dressing up, um, putting on your best, adding a little touch, whatever makes you feel um, more present, more visually engaging, to actually feel that you are at work, you showed up today, you're gonna to get into that meeting. I think having that attire and visual representation is reflected in how you engage with others. So I just wanted to add that here today. They say uh, dress to impress, but I think appropriate attire in terms of your surroundings, as well as your workplace environment is um, a consideration. In terms of background and surroundings, uh, we saw earlier some individuals are sitting in their office and you can see that behind them and others are say um, just below the Northern Lights or um, in some other uh, virtual um, reality in terms of their screen. Uh, as a best practice, um, utilize your space behind you as a backdrop. Uh, we each don't have the, the luxury of having a, our own office sometimes or a blank wall with um, things in the back. It's normally just what we got. Um, similar to Garrick earlier or uh, Tish or Samantha, you can use a virtual background uh, within your virtual presence to show that, um, you know, to add a little bit of uniqueness, some character to where you're at. I would advise to keep it professional um, and just be cognizant and aware of other people's interpretations of that backdrop or what it may conjure. So obviously in terms of today being um, a National Awareness Day for Murder, Missing Indigenous Women. If I were to have something in the back, it'd be a bit charged. Um, obviously, it would be for a different context in terms of maybe a community advocacy meeting that would be totally appropriate. But as far as today, in terms of having an informal one-to-one -one meeting with our group and our colleagues, um, I just want to reference that as well. And of course, maintain eye contact. Um, it is pretty difficult to also have your notes here on your desk while also trying to present. Uh, a quick trick that I have is actually having half of my screen open for Zoom while I have my notes here on the left as a digital file. So I can quickly reference, I'm constantly looking at the screen here. So for example, if you have notes for your presentation that are separate from your actual presentation, to have it here on your left as a smaller screen within your, uh, your window, uh, would benefit you so that way you're not trying to shuffle away you're engaged you're you are you are there with that this is an opportunity to minimize the amount of uh, distractions or things that may interrupt you for example right now here at dhr admin we have a sign on our door stating that we are in a um, webinar in a meeting session and for people to politely and discreetly come in and out as they need to however it as a presenter helps me know that my space and my surroundings are in a controlled environment. Therefore, I can give my energy, uh, my mood, uh, my words and, and, my, and my attention to what I'm engaging with here. Participant engagement. I think this would be the most difficult for anybody, expert or not, is maintaining the engagement of your audience, of your participants, of your attendees. Primarily with the meeting here at DXR Admin, everyone's in a gallery mode where you see everyone on Zoom and we normally have a uh, exchange discussion or provide updates so that everyone is on the know. In reference to a presentation like this, again, I offer to the participant to take a break from being on, so to speak, with the video and just allow them to listen and engage and not worry about themselves, but focus on the content. Um, so that is one way of engaging and understanding who you're addressing and how you're creating that environment and culture for the sake of um, the space you're holding, the virtual space you're holding. Again, this is an opportunity to regularly pause for questions if you're presenting things that are uh, pertinent to a person's position or the work that they do. Um, for example, um, for the Navajo Nation Employee Multi-Service Orientation, or as we know it, NIMSO, uh, I imagine it's fairly difficult to pause for questions with so many people um, attending at the same time, muting and unmuting themselves. Uh, this is an opportunity, again, to utilize the chat option uh, as one of the Zoom features here. Again, having a co-host on the side or someone to help facilitate and um, monitor those comments and questions is ideal. 
In reference to Zoom features as well, there is the speaker versus the gallery view. As I mentioned before, the speaker would be one singular person. For example, earlier, uh, we were in the gallery view where you could see everyone. Again, this is an opportunity to control the virtual space, but also to utilize those controls to benefit what you are wanting, wanting to present. If it's in a communal perspective, obviously the gallery view would be ideal. If it were just me presenting and just offering an update and information with little to no feedback expected, then the speaker view would be ideal in that way. So for example, in this case, we started with gallery view, we went into present, presenter view, which is me and this presentation. And now when we come back out, we will go to gallery view and work with some of these Zoom features. Again, um, some individuals are, uh, majority of individuals are comfortable utilizing the chat feature, but the reactions is, uh, I think, an opportunity to expand our virtual presence as well as our engagement. You can offer to the attendees, instead of unmuting, and speaking, uh, you can say, please use the raise hand feature within Zoom. So that way, someone raises their hand, you can obviously say, okay, call on them to address, open it up and close it and wait for the next hand raise. You as the presenter, you as the host, you as the facilitator of a meeting have that control. And more often than not, any attendee or participant is looking for that guidance, is looking for that feature, looking for that control. How do I engage with this space? If you as the presenter don't offer it, it's gonna go either way and it's gonna be a free for all. So having that control and setting the mood and the energy and letting participants know how they can engage, what they're expected to do, how they might be able to provide feedback is very important for that. So in reference to providing the presentation post-session logistics, uh, within Zoom, if you are a host, um, I'm not entirely sure if the free accounts are capable of this, but if you do have an account or a license with Zoom, you're able to generate attendee reports. An attendee report will list all the attendees who logged on to your presentation, when they logged on, when they logged off. For example, if an individual today was late or had some other prior commitment and, and logged on a little bit later than expected, I can see that. I can see exactly when they logged on. And for example, if they logged off early or stayed on all the way throughout the whole duration of the session, I can obviously see that as well. It'll tell me the time span, it'll tell me the minutes. If this were a webinar, it'll tell me when exactly you registered. Um, and it also lists your email and contact information you provided. So those are some things to keep in mind versus trying to look through the entire participant list and take a screenshot or save that. The attendee report is very beneficial in that. With that, you could reference the attendee report to generate certificates. In this case, this particular session will have a certificate of attendance for those all online here. But in reference to that, this is an opportunity to utilize data merge or mail merge to generate those certificates with reference to the information provided by the Zoom attendee report, right? And therefore you can provide follow-up emails, um, with this past session for the customer service training, it was definitely a lesson learned in terms of what I can do and what I've learned to apply to future presentations such as this. So one of that would obviously be providing a follow-up email if this were a webinar. Unfortunately, this is a meeting. Zoom does not have the capability to go from a webinar setting, which is panelists and a presenter with attendees here on the side. You can't see their video, you can't see their audio. They can just engage with chat and Q&A. However, if it were a webinar and to move into a meeting, that would be ideal. Unfortunately, you can't do that, hence this being a meeting rather than a webinar today. As far as this session, again, it is being recorded. I provided that disclaimer at the beginning of the session so that all attendees are aware of how they present themselves. The words that they say is, are going to be recorded. Uh, this is a sense of accountability, I believe, but also a form of accessibility for those who are unable to attend today or who may be interested in referencing this information and at a later date. So obviously this um, session will be recorded and saved to my computer. I can save it to my cloud if I wanted to, but saving it to my computer will allow me to um, publish it, put it on our YouTube page, put it on our, um, if we had maybe social media accounts, we could share it that way as well. Uh, Zoom does have the capability of going live and offering that through YouTube and Facebook as well. 
So this was a brief overview that I wanted to offer. And we're gonna go ahead and move into some questions really quickly. If none, immediately right after that, we'll go ahead and try some exercise. Thank you very much. So with that, are there any immediate questions or issues that come into mind, something that I have missed? This is um, something that I put together, but I'm open to any um, recommendations or thoughts. Dr. Fowler? Thank you, Shiaj. I appreciate everybody on the call. Uh, so if you want to speak, let's use your, um, your reaction where it says uh, raise hand. Then it gives you, when you're done, lower your hand. You know, you can do that as well. And I think one of the important thing, really important if you're a presenter is what Ralph did today that he did not share was to come in to work early and prepare in advance. And which is what he did. Everything is gonna run, it's smooth. Your internet st stability is there. So really preparing in advance. You, I know you're gonna, he prepared the day before, but he came in early to make sure everything was working. And you know, that, that's really important. The other thing is, you know, I think all of us listeners, we need, really need to make sure that our audio is working. We need to reevaluate our own systems. And it's to the point of where we had to even go as far as purchasing some computers um, for, for certain areas and then even purchase little uh, camera pieces for our, um, for our computers. And even light, you know, if you notice, um, his light was on earlier and then it went dark. So those are some of the, some of the features. And I think the most important thing is internet stability. And you know what, Raphael, thank you. I just learned something from you that I'm not even, that I was not even using. So when I do town halls, I put it on this whole poster board. So I have a poster board that I'm looking at on the other end, not knowing that, hello, you can put your, your notes right on your, your computer and look at it side by side rather than looking at the whole poster sheet that, that is on, on the wall that I usually prepare and post. It's so easy, I think, with this technology. It's really teaching us a lot. So thank you for sharing and that much I have. Thank you, Raphael. Thank you, Dr. Fowler. Jolene? Hey, Ralph, good job. Um, we also, OBI also purchased the um, Zoom license, but I didn't realize that there were all that good stuff tied in with it, the features as far as the certificates that you say, and then um, uh, the attendance log. So when you get a chance, uh, show me how to do that. For sure, we can Thank definitely you. do that. Yeah, no problem. Right. Roberta? Thank you uh, for the opportunity to participate and to um, share information as we move forward to reopening and a new way of conducting business. It's really important to educate and to train. Uh, so I just wanted to share that at um, Navajo Department of Workforce Development, this is something I recognize right off the bat. Um, so a lot of training to ensure your entire team members are familiar with the process. Um, but in the, they called it a video conferencing best practices. And we did one for the host and then we did one for participants. So um, one of the things that I would encourage is as a host, you actually sent the meeting invite appropriately with a, a title. Um, and as a host, we also said there should be, I, I'm requiring an agenda <clears throat> and also um, a time frame for the host to be online and open like 10 minutes prior, not half an hour or anything, but 10 minutes. So, um, and then the housekeeping stuff, which a lot of the stuff you covered. So I'm just kind of comparing notes right now to make sure. But on the participant side, um, at least for my NDWD team, uh, team here, we utilize Microsoft Teams. We've had that for a while. So we've been doing video conferencing. And then I've noticed that a lot of the participants aren't engaged or their cameras are off. And so as we started having conversations, we get through a presentation afterwards, the, the content of the presentation is asked again. So you kind of figure, okay, they're not paying attention. So, you know, we're trying to keep um, some requirements as well for participating in the meeting. It's no different than in-face participation. So I, I really appreciate the um, information that's provided. Um, 
and as a recommendation to everybody, I think they're, if you're developing yours, it's good to have a host requirements for all the audio checks and have a IT get ready and, um, and then participants. There should be some best practices recommendation for both sides uh, to maintain that professionalism and to keep things rolling fast. So I, again, I appreciate this. I'm learning stuff as well. And I'm trying to teach, um, this is the new, way, the new way we do business and to always represent in the best interest of the Navajo Nation and in your department. So just wanted to add that little bit of information to the presentation, but thank you very much for the share. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you very much, Roberta. I appreciate your comments as well, as well as the initiative to provide that to your staff. Reseda? Thank you, Ralph, for this opportunity to um, ask questions. And uh, one of the things that I'm happy to hear is that there is a certificate um, process uh, available using Zoom. And um, I guess the previous uh, meeting that you held our um, conference, we also looked at um, the ability to send out a certificate right away. Um, we did do our qualification assessment training. However, we already had our certificates done, but um, now that we know this feature is available, I think it'll help us. The other was uh, participant engagement. And um, when we did our training, what we try to do is um, encourage continuous participation and also to make sure that everyone um, is um, paying attention and uh, we ask them to keep their their um, camera on throughout the whole session. So that really helped us. But you did uh, mention that there is a way to be able to um, track or look at the attendance uh, reports. So these are new, uh, some new features that I learned of today. So I thank you for um, this training. Thank you. Thank you for that. And while we're on the subject of it, I'll go ahead and show you how to do it just real quickly. So again, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and I'm going to go to Safari. Don't mind my um, tabs. So okay. So you would just go ahead and log into your account here and then going under meetings. For example, majority of the, the DXR programs have meetings. I think we're the only one that has webinar right now. So again, going to meetings, obviously we're in one right now. I can join or end it. Obviously don't want to do that. You can go into previous. For example, it has all the staff meetings and things of the sort. So for example, under webinars, which we hosted previously, I can go back to April 22nd, the day we hosted the customer service training. I can access that. And then here, you can go ahead and go all the way down. It'll show me my total registrants, which was 388. And then we approved 387. The one individual uh, had to forfeit their registration due to uh, schedule confliction. Once you hit the attendee report, it tells you the type of report type you can obviously get. You can get the registration. If you were to utilize a poll, again, majority of these features are primarily with webinar. Um, but of course you can utilize an attendee report with meetings as well. So I'm going to hit a generate a report here and I'm gonna go ahead and stop my share and go to my desktop just so that way we can um, go through this together. So don't mind me, this may look a little odd here. And then we'll go to date added. One second. So as you're viewing my desktop, you can see within the attendee report, it tells you um, all of the information related to the Zoom session that you hosted. And again, this shows your attended attendance log right here, starting from attended, I'll go ahead and move that up. It'll show you yes or no. Uh, Zoom will es essentially say that a person attended your presentation if they logged on for say five or so minutes and logged off. It'll say that they attended. However, you can go and scroll here to the right end. It shows your join time at the exact time they joined and when they left. Um, 
There are individuals that appear several times, for example, not picking on anyone in particular, uh, Nikki Kanuho here, obviously logged on several times. Normally, this will be apparent if an individual is having internet instability to where they're being thrown off and trying to log back on. And then to see that on this side of the user in the host end was very interesting to see that. You can obviously save this as an Excel format sheet and then delete all these on unnecessarily co unnecessary columns and utilize a PDF or even if you have InDesign or some other publishing software to generate a certificate and then using mail merge to actually run those names through. So um, that, that is the clarification I needed to provide. Zoom does not have a certificate generator within their software or program, um, but you can utilize the information that it generates to streamline that process. So while we have a few minutes, I wanted to see if I can uh, show you this here. So I'm not sure how many people have utilized the whiteboard, but this is an option for you if you were to have a, I don't know, a strategic management session, if you wanted to actually write this so that people could see it right off the bat, you can do so. So if I wanted to, this is a white board draft session, uh, 0501. You can obviously type this and include notes. Um, within the mental health task force, Yvonne Kivillison has a different approach where she utilizes um, a Word doc that she shares and takes notes and provides comments and, and forms that document in live, while live, while having a discussion. Uh, in reference to that, you can have your co-host or one of your employees provide that for you as you're speaking, and they could notate uh, the discussions that are happening. Um, and, and those sorts of things. But I just want to emphasize that this whiteboard feature is available for those who may want to have some sort of uh, creative session or exchange or discussion or actually sketch out ideas in terms of what they're thinking. Uh, those of you working with Alex Zazi with DIT have noticed that he utilizes this feature a lot in terms of developing a framework for website development. Um, and some things that I may have missed within the presentation uh, best practice includes having your camera at eye level. So that way you are some, it, it appears as if you're looking directly at a person. So looking at the screen now, you can see who has an elevated camera. You can see who has a camera below where they're actually looking up at their face. And you can see those who are directly looking at their camera. So, and again, I'm gonna go ahead and switch view. Again, in terms of this, Oh, sorry, Rosita, let me go ahead and make me the spotlight here. This is presenter view, right? You, I myself and the presenter and it's solely on me. And if for yourself, you can put a spotlight on yourself. So for example, if you were to hover a particular individual's video, there's ask to mute for on my end, and then there's the three little dots. If you hit that, you can ask the person, you can chat with them, you can pin them. Um, obviously I have a little bit more options here as the host, but you can add a spotlight. So that spotlight means on your end, not mine, you can actually spotlight someone so that your attention is on them only. And this again goes back to accountability in terms of how you're engaging. Say I wanted to spotlight someone who wasn't paying attention for everyone right now. And as I'm talking, they probably wouldn't even notice. So it's a little bit of a, a, little bit of a discretionary feature on your end as the user, but I myself can control the spotlight for the entire, um, meeting as the host. So again, I have the spotlight on myself and I'm gonna go ahead and switch to gallery here. And so again, this is everyone and the spotlight is still on me. So obviously I'm gonna be the first person to talk and my video will show first. That is what a spotlight will do. So for example, when you're in a meeting, you know, everyone's jumping on and off, muting and unmuting the video going on and off. You can put a spotlight on yourself. So no matter what is happening here on your virtual space, you remain the point of focus as the presenter. So for example, I'm going to go ahead and remove that spotlight and then it should change to back to its normal. Um, in reference to this, uh, one thing that we have been doing here at DXR Admin as we're hosting these meetings are taking screenshots. If you notice in the last DXR newsletter, we had a screenshot where we um, took a, a screenshot of the division director address that we held with BPM staff development and OBI, I believe. 
Um, but to have that was really beautiful. Um, to see everybody showing up and, and providing their best was really nice and to see that here today. So in reference to that, if you don't mind all turning on your cameras, we're gonna take a quick screenshot uh, for our records and it's being recorded. I can take a screenshot whenever I want to, if I were to go back and play this, so no pressure. Um, so <laughs> this is your opportunity to present yourself in the best way, or I can go back and try and find what is the best for you. So we can do it either way. All right, so go ahead and turn on your camera and we're just gonna go ahead and do a quick wave or smile, whatever you're most comfortable with. And I'll go ahead and count down from three, two, one, picture. Okay, ready? Three, two, one, cheese. I imagine that's what we should say. <laughs> um, what else was there? Um, oh, this is the last one that I wanted to share. So for example, Zoom is constantly updating their software and their program. One thing that Tish and I recently um, tried was this immersive environment within Zoom. So majority of you may not be able to um, sit in this virtual immersive space because you need to update your Zoom feature. I would recommend to the program managers, this is an opportunity to update your program software. So for our next meeting, we can probably try this in terms of a smaller number with everyone being um, with the current software. Uh, Mr. Pete, I do see your hand raised, but let me go ahead and provide this before we uh, move to the last of it. So I'm gonna go ahead again under the view option. We have speaker, we have gallery. Now we're going to immersive. All right, uh, let's see, I'll give us the classroom. So check this out. So with immersive, you can actually have yourself in these physical spaces and I can change it. So if all of you had updated your Zoom software, I mean, you can see who's updated, like Reseed is updated, I'm updated, Tish is updated. There is a current update that went on. Uh, so for example, I can change this amusement immersive um, screen to reflect anything. So for example, you can go here and now we're in a classroom setting. So this is a better way, instead of having the gallery setting in terms of everyone's background, you can have the immersive setting to where it's just you in this virtual space. It may be different in terms of the type of meetings you want to have, but this is definitely an option moving forward. And I highly recommend that you update your Zoom software to reflect it. And again, this is even cooler you can make it immersive to where people are actually within your screen. You can't see it here because um, again, there is that updated that is needed, but I just wanted to go ahead and um, share that. Uh, so for example, I can put myself next to someone and then have this conversation. So for example, if 